Our next speaker, we're going to change the order slightly. Our next speaker is someone to whom we are eternally indebted. When the censors demanded that the Terminator scene in Talking Cop the movie be cut, <laughs> he, together with the youth wing of the Central Seat Gadwara, who are our biggest supporters, and helped keep the seat intact. He's an associate professor in English Literature and Creative Thinking at SMU. He's also a wonderful poet and internationally acclaimed academic with invitations to speak from all over the world. So we are very privileged to have gotten him home to join us, even if it's just a talk talk. <laughs> he's one of the nicest people we know and he says that we Singaporeans need to be fully aware of what is truly going on around them and to help in every way possible to make and keep us human. He said to introduce him as the MP for sometimes Blakang Kara. <laughs> hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, he puts the sing back in Singapore, Professor Kapal Singh. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, sir. <laughs> I believe that's <a> talker. <laughs> I'm given to understand that all the proceedings in this august house are absolutely under the auspices of something known as parliamentary privilege. <laughs> I'm further given to understand that any levity that is taken by a quotation directly or indirectly outside of this house, with both its chambers intact, shall be punished with unmitigated vigour. <laughs> so, coming after two very honourable members, unfortunately who are not standing but seated, I want to address a very serious topic as we celebrate nationhood. And this is the subject of making babies. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Sir, and Honourable Members of the House, and extra Honourable Members of the House, we have taken the question of making babies so seriously that it is very difficult when couples are copulating for them to say, let's make babies, let's make babies, let's make babies. <laughs> I therefore propose, I therefore propose, sir, that we set up a committee to look into the very serious implications of making making babies a national service pastime. We need to have a lot of fun. Very unfortunately, most of the time in Singapore we forget that in order to make babies, we've got to do it right. <laughs> but sometimes doing it right gets confused with doing the right thing. And sometimes the thing is not even there. <laughs> it becomes very, very problematic. So, in very serious consideration of the inadequacy of some of our members, <laughs> recommend two very, very interesting things that we need to read. I would urge every member of this house, as well as those outside, to read the best of Singapore erotica, which I'm told has just been published, <laughs> and also a story called Love Making Clothes, which I'm told, sir, is yet to be published. Now, what happens is that the most important thing about making babies is that it cannot be seen as an economic thing. Because when it is seen as an economic thing, then people begin to count. And when they start counting, they very often go to sleep. That's why a lot of people say, I'm trying to avoid Kima. It becomes a real problem. Now, I have um, very seriously discussed with some of my parliamentary colleagues, and especially in the Talking Cock Parliament, and they agree that this is what we perhaps need to do to remedy the situation. We are told on very good authority that the best babies are made when the female in question is between about 17 and 25, and the male in question is about 19 to 30. So I therefore suggest that we set up a very, very serious act to say that no Singaporean shall be allowed to enter university unless he or she has made sufficient numbers of babies. <laughs> And for those who have made sufficient numbers of babies, necessary and suitable incentives should be given, especially as they are permitted to enter what we may call university of life. <laughs> 
a special university set up for the purposes of absolute rewards for those who are actively procreating while others are creating. <laughs> this has to be very, very seriously looked into. And also told us that one of the problems we have is to try to educate a lot of our very important people known as the mandarins of our state about the whole nature of testicular efficiency. <laughs> However, I'm also told on sufficiently good authority by some of my colleagues that one accompanying problem with this is that very often these guys are not very sure about what it means to be testicular because their own testes seem to have been compromised. <laughs> but that's, um, that's something that we have to consider very, very seriously. Now, I would suggest, sir, that there's absolutely no need to be interested in getting things like rhinoceros balls or tigers penises or buffalo's hides, but what we need definitely is a lot more cops. I mean, a lot more roosters. Uh, and of course, the roosters must go with the hens. I'm reminded, sir, when I was at university, one of my philosophy professors said, all human beings in coupling relationships are divided into two categories. One known as the hand-packed husbands, and the other is known as the cock-packed wives. Ladies <laughs> <laughs> and gentlemen, all of this above and all of this speech is actually a whole lot of cock, and therefore we should end with a bang. Thank you. <laughs>